Chapter 1. The Arrival of Mysterious Plants In a quaint little town, nestled between rolling hills and winding rivers, there sat a small, cosy flower shop. The shop, with its charming red brick walls and a quaint wooden sign reading Bloom's Blossoms, was run by a gentle and kind-hearted florist named Mr. Bloom. He had a round, friendly face and always wore a faded green apron, which was a bit too big for him. One crisp morning, as Mr. Bloom was opening his shop, he noticed something unusual in the sky. A bright streak of light, like a shooting star, but it was bigger and closer. He watched in awe as it seemed to fall towards the earth, disappearing behind a nearby hill. Curiosity peaked, Mr. Bloom decided to investigate. He walked through the town, greeting his neighbors with a warm smile and a polite nod. The path took him past cozy houses and through a small patch of woodland, where birds chirped merrily. Finally, he reached the site where the object had landed. It was a small clearing, now marked by a shallow crater. In the middle of the crater, amidst scorched earth, was a strange rock, glowing faintly. But what caught Mr. Bloom's attention were the plants surrounding the rock. They were unlike any he had ever seen, a vibrant, with petals that shimmered in hues of blues and purples, and leaves that seemed to dance in the light breeze. Mr. Bloom, ever so gently, reached out to touch one of the plants. To his surprise, it changed shape, morphing into a beautiful, swirling pattern that matched his curious and delighted expression. He realized these plants were special, reacting to the emotions of those around them. Excited by this discovery, Mr. Bloom carefully dug up a few of these plants, making sure not to harm them. He carried them back to his shop, his mind buzzing with ideas. He imagined how these extraordinary plants could bring joy to his customers, and maybe even make his little shop famous. Back at Bloom's Blossoms, he found the perfect spot for the plants, right in the front window, where everyone passing by could see them. He spent the rest of the day tending to them, making sure they were comfortable in their new home. As the sun began to set, painting the sky in shades of orange and pink, Mr. Bloom stood back to admire his work. The mysterious plants, now part of his humble flower shop, seemed to glow softly, adding a magical touch to the cozy atmosphere. Little did Mr. Bloom know, these plants were about to change his life and the small town in ways he could never have imagined. Chapter 2. The Law of Desire Word about Mr. Bloom's extraordinary plants spread like wildfire through the small town. It was a sunny Saturday morning when the first curious customers began to trickle into Bloom's blossoms. They had heard rumors of plants that could change shape and were eager to see them for themselves. Mr. Bloom, with a twinkle in his eye and a wide smile, welcomed each customer. Good morning. Welcome to my little shop of wonders, he would say, his voice tinged with excitement. The shop was busier than it had ever been. The bell above the door jingled almost constantly as people came in and out. The plants, now displayed prominently in the shop window, were the center of attention. They were kept in beautiful clay pots painted in soft pastel colors. As people approached them, the plants would react, their petals unfurling or their stems gently swaying. One young girl, with bright eyes and a head full of curly hair, stood in front of a plant. She was holding her mother's hand, looking up in awe. As she giggled, the plant in front of her blossomed into a shape that resembled a small, dancing fairy. Her laughter filled the shop, and others watched in amazement. An elderly man, with a walking stick and a gentle smile, stopped by another plant. As he gazed at it, the plant slowly morphed into a shape that reminded him of a rose he used to give his wife. A tear twinkled in his eye, and a soft smile spread across his face. Mr. Bloom moved around the shop, helping customers and explaining how the plants seemed to connect with people's emotions and desires. They're quite special, he explained. They seem to reflect what you feel and what you wish for. The atmosphere in the shop was buzzing with excitement. People talked and laughed, sharing their experiences with the plants. Some were taking pictures wanting to capture the magic of the moment. As the day went on, 
more and more people visited the shop. Mr. Bloom had never seen anything like it. He was thrilled to see his customers so happy and intrigued. The shop felt alive, filled with a warm, joyful energy. Outside, the sun began to dip below the horizon, casting a golden glow over the town. Inside Bloom's blossoms, the plants continued to enchant the town's folk, their mysterious beauty shining brighter than ever. As Mr. Bloom locked up the shop that night, he felt a sense of pride and wonder. His little shop had brought something truly magical to the town. Little did he know, this was just the beginning of an extraordinary journey that would take him and the town on a path full of surprises and discoveries. Chapter 3 The Consequences of Losing Control As days turned into weeks, the enchantment of Mr. Bloom's plants began to cast a deeper shadow over the town. Initially, the impact was subtle, almost unnoticeable. People started to visit the flower shop not just out of curiosity, but out of a growing need. The school teacher, Mrs. Jenkins, was among those who became frequent visitors. She used to be a calm and patient woman, but now she seemed distracted and anxious. Every day, after school, she would rush to the flower shop to stand before a plant that took the shape of a beautiful, serene landscape. She said it reminded her of her childhood home. Teenagers from the local school started to hang around the shop too. They were drawn to a plant that would morph into various symbols of adventure and excitement, reflecting their yearning for freedom and new experiences. They spent hours staring at it, their eyes wide with wonder, often ignoring their homework and other responsibilities. Even Mr. Thomas, the town's banker, a man known for his serious and practical nature, began to visit the shop daily. He would stand before a plant that formed shapes resembling gold coins and treasure chests, lost in thoughts of wealth and success. The once cheerful atmosphere in Bloom's blossoms began to change. The constant stream of visitors seemed more like a procession of dreamers, lost in their desires. Mr. Bloom noticed this change and felt a growing concern. The joy and laughter that once filled his shop were slowly being replaced by a silent, almost obsessive fascination. The townspeople, once lively and engaged with each other, now seemed distant and preoccupied. Conversations at the local cafe were no longer about daily life, but about the plants and the desires they sparked. Some even argued over whose desires were more deserving of the plants' attention. One afternoon, a young couple, usually full of laughter and love, had a heated argument in front of the shop. They were both fixated on a plant that seemed to shape itself into different forms of a perfect life, a beautiful house, a happy family, a successful career. Their argument revealed how their desires had started to clash, creating tension and unhappiness. Mr. Bloom watched these changes with a growing sense of unease. The magical plants, once a source of wonder and delight, were now becoming a source of discord and obsession. He began to wonder if he had made a mistake by bringing these plants into his shop and the lives of the townspeople. That night, as Mr. Bloom sat alone in his shop, surrounded by the whispering plants, he realized the situation was slipping out of his control. The desires reflected by the plants were no longer just innocent wishes. They were becoming deeper and more intense, revealing the hidden cravings and longings of the town's inhabitants. As the moon cast a pale light through the shop window, Mr. Bloom knew he had to find a way to address the growing obsession. But the question that loomed large in his mind was, how? Chapter 4. Struggle and Helplessness The situation in the town reached a turning point when the local authorities began to take notice of the strange happenings at Bloom's Blossoms. It was a cloudy Tuesday morning when two officials from the town council, Mr. Harrow and Ms. Green, visited the shop. They were serious and looked concerned, their brows furrowed as they observed the plants and the people around them. Mr. Bloom greeted them politely, Good morning, how can I help you today? But he felt a knot of worry in his stomach. He had never seen government officials in his shop before. We've heard reports about these plants. Mr. Harrow began, his voice stern. They seem to be causing some unusual behavior in the town. Ms. Green added, 
We're concerned about the impact these plants are having on the people. We need to understand what's happening here. Mr. Bloom tried to explain the best he could. He spoke about the meteorite crash, how he found the plants, and their strange ability to reflect people's desires. The officials listened intently, occasionally exchanging glances. Meanwhile, outside the shop, the atmosphere in the town had become tense. People were gathered in small groups, talking in hushed tones about the official's visit. Rumors and speculations were spreading fast. In the following days, a team of scientists arrived to study the plants. They were led by Dr. Lewis, a kind-faced man with a gentle manner. He and his team set up equipment around the plants, taking samples and making detailed observations. The townspeople watched with a mix of curiosity and apprehension. Some were afraid that the scientists would take the plants away, while others hoped they would find a solution to the growing obsession. As the investigation continued, the plants' influence seemed to grow stronger. People were now visiting the shop not just from the town, but from nearby areas as well. They all wanted to experience the plants' mysterious power. Mr. Bloom felt overwhelmed and helpless. The shop, once a place of joy and beauty, had become a center of controversy and unease. He missed the days when his biggest worry was which flowers to display in the window. One evening, Dr. Lewis approached Mr. Bloom with a grave expression. We've discovered that these plants are far more powerful than we thought, he said. Their ability to influence human emotions is unprecedented. We're not sure yet how to control it. Mr. Bloom felt a chill run down his spine. The thought that he had unknowingly unleashed something potentially dangerous upon his town weighed heavily on him. He realized that the situation was far beyond what he could manage. Mr. Bloom sitting in his shop after closing time, surrounded by the softly glowing plants. He looked at them, not with the wonder he once had, but with a sense of foreboding. What had started as a magical discovery was now turning into a problem that threatened to spiral out of control. Chapter 5. An Unpredictable Future The small town was now buzzing with the news of Mr. Bloom's plants. People from all over the region were visiting, drawn by the allure of these mysterious plants. The once quiet streets were now crowded, with cars parked along the curbs and people milling about. Mr. Bloom watched this transformation with a heavy heart. He stood behind the counter of his shop his usual warm smile replaced by a look of concern. He missed the days when his shop was a haven of peace and tranquility. One evening, as the sun set and cast a soft orange glow over the town, Dr. Lewis came to the shop with some important news. His face was serious, and he spoke in a low, steady voice. We've done extensive research, Mr. Bloom. These plants, they're not just responding to people's desires. They're amplifying them, making them stronger and more intense. We've never seen anything like it. Mr. Bloom felt a sense of dread. What can we do, D.R. Lewis? He asked, his voice tinged with worry. Dr. Lewis shook his head. It's hard to say. We're dealing with something completely unknown. For now, we recommend keeping the plants isolated. We need to prevent their influence from spreading further. The decision was difficult. Mr. Bloom knew the plants were special, but he also understood the danger they posed. With a heavy heart, he agreed to Dr. Lewis's recommendation. The next day, Mr. Bloom and Dr. Lewis worked together to move the plants to a secure location outside of town. They were placed in a specially designed greenhouse, where their impact could be monitored and studied without harming the public. The townspeople had mixed reactions. Some were relieved, feeling that a potential threat had been removed. Others were disappointed, missing the sense of wonder the plants had brought. As weeks passed, the town slowly returned to its normal rhythm. The streets were quieter, and the buzz of excitement had faded. People started to focus on their daily lives again, but the memory of the plants lingered in their minds. Mr. Bloom's shop was quieter now but he found solace in returning to his routine. He tended to his regular flowers with care, finding joy in their simple beauty. 
The story ends with Mr. Bloom standing in his shop, looking out at the quiet street. He thought about the plants in the greenhouse, wondering about their future. Would they ever be safe to bring back? What mysteries did they hold? These questions remained unanswered, leaving a sense of mystery and wonder. The impact of the plants on the town was a reminder of the unpredictable nature of life and the power of desire. As Mr. Bloom turned off the lights and locked the shop door, he knew that the adventure with the plants was over, for now. But the future was uncertain, and who knew what it might bring? Thank you for watching. To stay up to date on our future videos, please subscribe and hit the notification bell and let us know what you think in the comments below.